I suppose in his mind what he was doing was appealing to the court of public opinion. But the problem with court of public opinion is that it has no way of handing down a judgment. There's no point trying to convince Fiona Phillips or an unseen um, part of the ITV audience that you're innocent because neither of them can give you innocence. We'd like to ask you this question. Michael Barrymore has not been found guilty of any crime, but do you want to see him on television ever again? His particular difficulty was that he wasn't guilty of anything, but nor was he innocent of anything. To vanish would be seen as an admission of guilt. We've just, uh, we just received a statement from Essex Police. They've reviewed the investigation into the death of Stuart Lubbock, and in view of an additional line of inquiry suggested by Michael Barrymore, a further investigation will be launched based on the suggestion that the injuries to Stuart Lubbock were caused at the Princess Alexandra Hospital. How do you think those injuries were sustained? What's your suspicion? Uh, if I start saying my suspicions on things like that, then uh, I think that would be totally wrong. That's for the police to investigate. I have my views on it, and thoughts, obviously. How might this affect your career? Well, I have no, no way of knowing. I, I, it's not in my hands what I do. If somebody wants to use me, they'll use me. If the public want me, they'll watch. Today, Stuart Lubbock's family said they wanted every possible line of inquiry followed up. It must be spelled out, but the facts will be the same. Meanwhile, Michael Barrymore says not only is he now ready to work again, he says there are offers on the table. If I was to say to you, how many months before you're back on telly, Michael, what would you say? Four, five months, six months. He says four, five, six months. Can you see it happening? Barrymore on telly? I think everyone would like to see Barrymore back on TV, because when he's on form, he's yeah, brilliant. He you know, the British public are a pretty forgiving bunch. An ITV executive at the time told me that one of the issues in whether to bring back Michael Barrymore was that an astonishing number of ITV adverts begin with a shot of a swimming pool. It seems odd, but of course that is true because so much of the advertising is holiday related. But imagine Barrymore comes back on ITV, he says we'll be back after this, and then you just see a succession of pictures of swimming pools. At the peak of his fame, Michael Barrymore was watched by millions, but he's making his comeback in front of an audience of just a few hundred. This was a rehearsal, but he's hoping the show's seven-week run in the West End will restore his public reputation and allow him to step back into the limelight. Coming back onto stage, it was a risk, wasn't it, that although you're entirely legally innocent, mm. there was a fear, there must have been, that that scandal is now a shadow, that it's harder for people to laugh at you. Did that worry you? Um, I, ca I, ca I can't go on stage and, and, and take that on stage with me, and there's no way I do. But you don't worry that people see you differently now because of all that stuff they've read in papers about you? Well, I mean, yeah, but if they believe what they read, would they come in the first place? I sat through it with sweating palms and a knot in my stomach, and the audience was, was not with him. There was a point when he said to the band, look, you star, I'll come in, it doesn't matter if we go, don't finish together, because frankly, no one here cares. And, and it was true, no, nobody actually did. You cannot maintain the polite fiction that you're out for an evening of light entertainment. You realise you were watching a desperate man. To me, he felt the audience were withholding their warmth and laughter. They were judging him. So one of his great calling cards, which was his rapport with the audience, disappeared. We would have been showing the interview on the Friday night and then discussing it. And on the Thursday, as I remember, they announced that the theatre run had been abandoned. They'd cancelled the whole theatre show. <laughs> Oh,
police say they've taken evidence from 16 people, including pathologists and staff at the hospital. Detectives are satisfied injuries to Stuart Lubbock occurred before he died. The, the thought of any interference with the body when it's in the mortuary, I, I couldn't uh, accept for the simple reason. One is the body is wrapped up, and it was wrapped up when I was there present. And the other is that you've actually got bruising and tearing and bleeding from the anus. And if you were dead, that would not happen. When you find bruising, um, it indicates that the person is still alive and their heart is still beating. So there's no doubt that he was still alive when those injuries were sustained. In my opinion, Stuart Lubbock sustained those injuries at Michael Barrymore's house. I, I think they've occurred shortly before his, his death. The theory that this was essentially necrophilia, I think, is, 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 a, is a fanciful explanation. Were you surprised that the medics didn't notice the injuries to Stuart's anus? No, not at all. It's quite common forensic pathologists to pick up injuries that are not identified by clinicians. And that's why you do post-mortem examinations, because we find things that other people don't.